Hey, hey, here we are. You ready? Hey, let's talk about healing this morning. Let's talk about exactly how Jesus heals people today. How he does it today. I gotta get my Bible. Exactly how Jesus heals people today. Hey, happy Tuesday. Do I look all right? I gotta look good. You people are so good looking because I got your pictures on my refrigerator and on my hutch over there. So I gotta look good for you. Hey, we're going to the Space Center this morning. That's why we're on just a little bit early because I gotta get done and get everything posted so you can uh, watch it. But we're going to the Space Center, a little group of us. We're going to go up there and see all the stuff. So we do that every once in a while we go up there. So we're going to have a good time today. So I'm doing this early for you. How Jesus, does, does Jesus himself heal the people today? Well, let's see. Let's go to Romans. Let's start there. Romans chapter 10. So many people pray. And when, when they pray for healing, they go, Oh, Lord Jesus, please reach down and touch me. I don't think his arm will is that long. Now, I'm not sure how far away heaven is, but the Lord's arm is not going to reach this far. Amen. Because the Lord's the size of an average man. He has a body. He has a body. Amen? Now, it's a glorified body, but he has a body. We're going to have the same kind of body that he has. We are also going to have a glorified body. We're going to be exactly like him. Amen? But I don't think his arm will reach that far. Well, some people, it tells us here, it says, but the righteousness, this is my Romans chapter 10, the way it's marked up. Somebody said that, oh, Pastor Jim, wouldn't it be nice if you could publish that Bible with all your notes and marks and everything in it? Huh? I, I know Brother Copeland put out one. We have several copies of it. And it's got a lot of his notes in it. And it's really great. But I don't know if, if I would be able to do the, well, I suppose somebody could, there's, you can't, there's nothing you can't do. Amen. But I don't, I wouldn't know how to do it. It says in verse six of Romans 10, but the righteousness, which is of faith speaks like this. Don't say in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up again. In other words, what it's telling us there is, is don't try to bring him down or don't try to bring him up. He's not here. Jesus is not here. Oh, Pastor Jim, but Jesus said he'd never leave us. No. No, he, he, he did say he'd never leave us, and he won't. He's always with us. He absolutely is always with us. But don't try to bring him down for what you want or need. Or don't try to bring him up. The way the Lord heals people today is not... I'm trying to explain this so you don't get confused. Let me show you how he does do it not how he doesn't do it, okay? Let me show you how he does do it. It's in Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Peter explains it. The man at the temple gate was healed. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see. It, it's not Jesus himself who heals people today. It's faith 
in his name. It is faith in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> I'm telling you people, this is so simple. Now, I used to say it's so simple that your heads are going to explode, but I'm not allowed to say that anymore. My entourage has told me not to say that. I'm not allowed to say that. That I'm not allowed to say this is so simple your head will explode, so I won't. Because Mary said she does not want people's heads exploding all over the place. She doesn't want that. So I'm not going to say that anymore. Let me say this is so simple, maybe you will be astounded. How is that? Is that a better... Is that a better word? I don't hear her. <clears throat> She's back in another part of the house. It's so simple, you will be astounded. You know, I'm astounded by God's word all the time. It's okay to be astounded by God's word. Every, every time I, I get a revelation of something in God's word, I go, whoa, that's being astounded. Astounded is fine. She, here she is. She said, astounded is fine, but I'm not allowed to say that your head will explode. So I won't. Not anymore. I'm telling you people, this healing business is so simple. Now I want to show you, I want, I want to tell you about some people who got a hold of this. Probably the first one who really understood this after the apostles, as far as I know, now if there was other, I'm not saying that I'm absolutely sure this was the first, this was the first one that I know about. And there's a lot I don't know. So there very well could be others. But the first one that I know about was William Branham in 1945, 1946, which was a long time ago. That was like 70 years ago, 71, 72 years ago. And he realized, he realized that the power in the name of Jesus. Now, I know that Break Every Chain is a wonderful song. We sing that song at the end of every one of our worship services. Power in the name of Jesus. And the reason we do is because it sets the stage in our church to pray for the sick and to pray for people to be blessed and to pray for needs because they get this in their spirit about the power in the name of Jesus and they are much more receptive to healing and to being blessed. So we sing that every Sunday morning. At the end of our service, the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. A wonderful song. A minor. It starts out A minor and just... It's, it's just it's just great. Everybody gets into it and there's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Sickness is a chain. Poverty is a chain. And there's power in that name. And, and Peter said in Acts 3.16 that it is faith in the name of Jesus that has made this man whole. And the key to everything to all of God's promises, to everything that, that everything that God has for us is found, including all the blessing of Abraham and everything, the key to the whole program is found in Mark chapter 16, verse 17. These signs shall follow them that have faith in my name. And William Branham, 1945, 1946, he got a hold of this. And he realized, he realized that faith in the name of Jesus would heal people, would cast out the spirits of sickness, the spirits of infirmity. And he did it. And blind eyes were open, ears were opened, cancer was healed. T.L. Osborne went to one of his meetings in 1946 in Portland, Oregon. And turned into the greatest healing evangelist we've seen since Jesus. Just tens of thousands of people got healed. 
in his meetings. Oral Roberts hung out with William Branham. He did the same thing that William Branham did, got the same results. A.A. A. Allen did the same thing. Went to one of William Branham's meetings and he went to Oral Roberts' meeting. He said, I can do this. And he did. Jack Cole, same thing. Did the same thing. Got the same results. Now, what, you have to ask yourself, what did all these people, the healing evangelists and Jimmy Kibler have in common? Why am I able to do the same thing that the healing evangelists back in the 40s and the 50s did? The common denominator is faith in the name of Jesus. That's how Jesus heals today, through faith in his name. But it takes somebody that operates at an extraordinary level of faith in that name. An extraordinary level of faith. You gotta know. It's like I know when I use the name of Jesus, it's exactly like Jesus himself standing here. And it is. It is. See, when Jesus left here, he didn't leave us defenseless against sickness and disease and poverty. He gave us his name. It's, it's like he never left. That's why he said, I will be with you always. His name is here. He gave it to us to use as a weapon against sickness and poverty and disease. Everything caused by the devil. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus left us his name to defend ourselves against that crap. And that's what it is. Crap. From the devil. In uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, it says that Jesus was manifested on this earth to destroy the works of the devil. And I got news for you. I'm here for the same reason. And I use his name to do exactly what he did when he was on this earth. And I get the same results. People healed of cancer. People healed of brain tumors, melanomas, people cured of poverty. The name of Jesus will cure poverty just as quick as it will heal cancer. I'm telling you what, people come to me and just, I use that name to heal them. The name of Jesus. He gave it to us to use. That's how Jesus heals people today. Through his name. I'm telling you, when Jesus said, Without me, you can do nothing. He's absolutely right. But with him, there's nothing I can't do. And the way I am with him is with his name. I have his name. It's like I have a holster. Just like a sheriff has a holster. And in that holster, he has a gun. I have a holster. And in that holster is the name of Jesus. And believe me, I am ready to use it on your behalf. If you're sick, please go to my website, increasenow.com. Get a hold of me. I will use the name of Jesus to heal your sickness, to heal your disease. We have had people get new hearts, people free of cancer, return to their families. We accept no offerings from sick people. We don't want your money. We just want to get you healed. I'm out of time today. Go to increasenow.com. Call me. We will get you healed. Hey, make it a great day today. And remember this, God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills. Go to increasenow.com if you're sick or you know anybody that's sick and get a hold of me. We will get them healed through the wonderful name of Jesus.